Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, it's time to test out the lizard. So I pulled Laz here over the weekend. Uh, he's probably the most exciting champion I've pulled in a while. Uh, I already had a three star soul for him. So I've, I've bumped him straight up to Ascension. Honestly, like the next layer of soul is an insane growth. So if I go one more layer, I would actually get another 45% crit damage one more level which is nuts um so you know the power of of taking anyone to four star right now is is absolutely insane in terms of like power creep in your champs but yeah azarius here is going to be uh tested fully tested today full damage mode uh, in fact what i'm going to do you would have seen i also picked up gizmak the terrible uh, i'm actually going to go and book lazarius so i've only got i say only i've got seven mythical books uh, i've never bought a mythical book in my life and i don't intend to so this is literally just me finding them um, in events and stuff like that um uh, you know they could be whale events don't get me wrong but i've never i never just bought a pack anyway it doesn't matter so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna flip his form because this is the form that i'm most excited about his deathly form here and in fairness the first form's good we'll go over the kit in a minute but first form's really good but the second form is where the damage comes from and I'm going to try and make sure that we get, I, I think I just fully book his other form on, say, five books. Grab the extra damage. 20% extra damage is a lot. Plus the cooldown is insanely strong. So I think we just fully book this form. Maybe I don't so much care about the A1. So if books happen to go into the A2 and the A3 without going to the A1, then I would stop. But it's going to be at least four books. So we'll do that first. Now, I know I should be saving for a CVC and all that stuff, but who can be bothered with that? Hold on a minute. Oh, it's good. It's good. So the books have not gone in the A1. Uh, it means that I could book this form, the, um, the normal form here, the support form. All I would say is like, eh, I don't know. It's a really, like, the skills are really good. I don't feel like I need the books in this form, though, because I think I only shift back to this form when things are getting hairy and I want to start reviving people and stuff. So I think um, I think I leave this form unbooked. I'll save these ones and I might throw some of those into Gizmak when I do his showcase. But second form is full damage. Okay, look at the power of this dude, by the way. That it's got to be a bug. It kind of adds the power of both forms added together, which is why you see some insane power dudes. But anyway, what's going on? We have got lethal gear on. We have got cruel gear on. So we're ignoring here 30% of the enemy's defense just because of these two sets added together. Yeah, and we're also gaining the extra crit rate from lethal, extra attack. I've got the most godly ring you're ever going to see in your life. <laughs> a four roll into attack with a max glyph. So that ring is absolutely insane. I've got an amulet with extra crit damage on it. We've got my sexy gloves. Probably would rather this was crit damage, honestly, but I'm not going to re-roll an attack percent because it's already good. Um, and then we've got a nice chest with attack percent and attack percent. Some boots with a bit of speed on there to keep us going. And then we're basically just pumping crit damage, attack, crit rate, uh, all of those good things. We've got masteries, which end in Helm Smasher. Basically, masteries, which is just going to boost my damage as much as I can. Uh, and we're going to do a test at the moment. We are on this kind of like free re-gear moment right now. so. Uh, the optimizer was kind of like spitting builds, and I was like, yeah, whatever. Let's find some good ones. Let's talk about form one then. So this is the support form, but shield out with the A1. It's actually kind of decent as a support one, but I'd say he's, he's not got inbuilt survivability. So him as a support, although he has quite nice base stats in support mode, I guess you could build him pretty tanky if you wanted to go that route. This doesn't feel like you should when, he's eight, when his second form is so nuts. The A2, though, is a great skill. So Attacks all enemies before attacking places block debuffs. So before he does anything, he's going to stop himself taking debuffs and, and your team taking debuffs. This is actually a really great part of this skill. Also decreases the duration of all enemy buffs by two turns. It's pretty much a buff strip. Um, and then after attacking, you get blocked buffs on as well. This might be kind of decent for Amius, actually, thinking about it. Uh, maybe. Anyway, maybe he doesn't do enough other stuff that's good for Amius. But... We've got a turn meter fill here, um, and we've also got increased attack and strengthen for the whole team. So this is not to be uh, sniffed at in terms of a, a decent skill as well. And then his passive here, which is 
pretty cool. So at the start of this champion's turn, places perfect bail and increase accuracy on him for two turns. So more accuracy to do his debuffing. Perfect Veil means that he won't be targeted naturally unless it's an AoE, and it means that he will take less damage. So actually, when you put Perfect Veil and Strengthen together, he's pretty tanky. It's actually quite a tanky combo. Also, he receives 3% less damage for every 750 attack you can get. So if you get to 7,500 attack, you will get 30% additional damage reduction. I'm actually kind of interested just to see what Perfect Veil plus this plus this will do. Now imagine him in stalwart gear, like in, I don't know, a clown boss run or something, like actually kind of nuts, kind of nuts. So this is really cool. I like the way they've built this into his kit. He's a nuka that's got some sort of survivability in his kit. He's got the active effect as well. At the end of this champion's turn, revives an ally with half health, half turn meter and puts perfect veil on the revive ally. This is on a three turn cooldown. Like, in any area of the game, that's pretty nuts, especially somewhere like Live Arena. If you just want to pick someone up, you could flip form, get someone back, become a support for a little while before you flip back. So pretty, pretty uh, insane. We've also got speed in all battles by 25%, like crazy. <laughs> and then we go into nuts forms. Let's see how much attack and stuff I've got in this form. 7.4k attack with no empowerment. And that says a force, uh, sorry, a three star blessing. No empowerment. Pretty mad. And 291 crit damage. Like I say, if I got one more star of my blessing, that's at like three, what, 335 or something? It's bonkers how much more you get. But um, anyway, this form, he loses speed, actually. I didn't, I, I set him up on the optimizer to go 170 speed, but I set him up in the other form. Doesn't matter. For the damage test, we'll leave it as it is. And then I'll probably flip him into some. Um, speedy boots. So we've got here A1 double hit. The first hit increases his attack by 3% up to 30. So long fights like Hydra or Clan Boss or something, you could get yourself another 30% attack. The second hit decreases 3% of the target's attack or defense or destroys 3% max HP. I mean, damn. You're just slowly whittling people down. So you want to be using this A1 often, which is I did put one revenge piece on him to try and get more of that. And I've also got the mastery, which counterattacks because I want to get some more of that going on. But the other skills are so good, you know, you won't use it that much. But I guess live arena, longer fights, this could end up being pretty good in terms of boosting you whilst reducing um, the enemy. Second skill here, AoE, ignores shield and defense. So if Seafy's putting out increased defense, whatever. Shields from people like Necrits, whatever. Um, before attacking, removes all debuffs from this champion, increases his attack damage by 15% for each debuff removed. Or if you're not removing any, 15% for everyone who's alive on your team. So literally like another 45% damage or attack damage. Plus you get 20% for the, for the book there. Like it's going to be nuts, honestly. And then we've got the uh, third skill here, A3, attacks an enemy two times. Ignores ally protect, strengthen, and shield. This is a straight net crit counter, as well as 30% of the target's defense. So you've got 30% defense ignored here, plus another 30 here, that's 60. Plus Helm Smasher, if it procs, is what, 25? So you're ignoring the vast majority of defense with this skill, which makes it crazy. Before attacking, steals 50% of the target's turn meter. That can't be resisted. So there's a good chance he's just going to cycle around again. Just a crazy skill. And then we've got here on its passive. So at the start of this champion's turn, places increased attack and increased crit damage on himself. Self-buffing. We don't need to have you know, the normal buffers in the squad. He's going to do it by himself every turn. And then the active part here increases the cooldown of all enemy steals by two turns. Whenever you kill someone with this champion. So bam, take out a threat, lock out the enemy team, cannot be resisted. If the champion kills two or more enemies in a single attack, this effect cannot be resisted. <laughs> so if you can take out a couple with this, I mean, damn, basically everyone else is locked out. And I think, so I took Soul Reap on him. I might be wrong on this. I took Soul Reap because I think this counts if you kill stuff with a blessing, like 
Phantom Touch, Soul Reap. I might be wrong. I'll need to check with Saf on that, but I think it does. Oh, it says here, though, this effect will only activate once. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. So we're going to lock out all of the enemy steals by two turns whenever we kill someone with, uh, if we kill two people with this, which, um, and, and that cannot be resisted. Even if you kill one with this, it's basically going to use your accuracy. So I did put some accuracy in this build. I've got like a couple of hundred, 220. So yeah, not too bad. Anyway, let's, let's do a damage test. Get ready for raid. Maximum damage. Damage. Okay, the damage test coming in. So as I say, we've got 7.5k attack, 291 crit damage. We've got the damage masteries in play. Let's do this. What's so funny is we don't need Arbiter in the team because he's actually got his own self-buffing attack. So damn, it's actually nuts. So we could just bring someone in for an attack aura here and see what goes on. Right. Poison them for extra damage. Drop defense and weaken across the wave. Poison us for extra damage. Uh, we're just going to... I do with him <laughs> he's gonna nuke someone right okay so I guess we go form one first just to see what's going on with it uh no we're not we're gonna flip into form two stuff it form two is what we want to see metamorph we get our increased attack increased crit damage let's go with the a1 first apothecary taking a dive my friend he swoops in 167 and he just locked out did he just lock out the whole enemy team yeah he did yeah yeah Looked out the whole enemy team as well. Okay then, Metamorph, A2, which is the AoE skill. Let's see what this is doing. Is this, a, is this a double hit? No, single hit, single hit. And we're gonna hit for 400K. Okay then, let's test out the A3 as well. Oh my God, this guy's nuts. A3, self buff, let's go. Apothecary, hey feeling. So this one, this is the double hit, right? Yeah, double hit. Pop, 334, and it's a double hit, so that would be 700k of damage. Okay, let's test it on the boss quickly. So drop defense and weaken. Not that we really need to drop defense because we're ignoring basically all of it anyway. There's poisons out there. Uh, we're in form one right now, I think, am I? No, I'm in form two already. Right, okay. A2, form two, a 350k smack on the dragon. Let's just let him go. Damn, this guy is a lot of fun. Okay, I think we're probably going to go straight into the arena and give him some test in there. Okay, just had arena reset, so unfortunately I've dropped right back down in the arena, but never mind. That's fine. It's fine. Who do I want to pair him with here? Can I squeeze these two in somehow as well? No, it's not, it's not their day. It's not their day. Um, so we're going to go, I guess we don't need Arbiter. I do need Necrit, actually. So Necrit is pretty damn important in this this type of setup if you're going higher end because Necrit needs to protect this guy. If you don't protect him with Necrit, then he's probably going to be dead at any sort of high level because he's quite squishy, really. I like the speed lead. We could take Sifi for some speed and buffs. Necrit to protect him. I don't really need to drop their defense, I don't think, in the arena. I mean, I could. I don't think I need to. So maybe we'll just go someone like a Mikage as another support. Or I just bring someone in who's already got like more support gear on, i.e. my Mithral has got like um, a big bolster set on. So we've got double bolster, Sifi, and then we would just want to set it up so that Sifi do this. He is going to metamorph and then go into, what do I want to do? Like full nuke? I think so. I, I, I guess I would stop. The auto play if I was up against Necrit. So if I'm up against Necrit, I want to use the A3 first. Uh, Necrit, kind of whatever, whatever, that's fine. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens here. So he is super slow in my build. Don't forget that. Just slow it down. Change. What's that? 220k! 220k. I got. It's either reaction gear or weak here. I didn't really see. Might have been reaction gear, honestly. Oh, take another rest. Even the A1's taking him down. Flipping it. All uh, right, what else we got? I guess anyone, anyone's capable of beating this team, I guess. I don't have any like real inbuilt protection for it. I'm interested to see what sort of damage we do against someone like a Pythian here. This is a really tanky team, actually. Oh, just nuking them down. And I've locked out their skills. Oh my God, it's actually disgusting. 
I nuked him down, and then I locked out the revive. For live arena, this would be incredibly broken. Like, I can imagine he's probably one of the most used champions for live arena if people have got him because that lockout, the lockout skills, is just so nuts. Like, Pythian's like, don't worry, boys, I'm picking you up. The lizard says, no, you're not. No, you're not. Or oh, Harima. Harima would probably be a fair counter to him, actually. Harima plus Ultimate Death Knight. The wrong affinity for both of them. This is kind of disgusting. So this might be... Oh, well, this is a proper test. Stone skin on the other dudes. I don't think I've got any way to deal with... I guess I could try and clean off buffs. It's, it's still a 50-50. Let's see this. So... Hold on a second. We get increased accuracy, do we? Where's our increased accuracy come from again? I've got it already. Okay, so at the start of this turn, increased accuracy. Yeah, so my accuracy is up to now like, what, 330 or something. It's not high. But in support mode, you could just go in and try and rip buffs off. We didn't land it on, on these guys. But whilst they've got stone skin up, there's probably not a lot I can do. So stone skin's still a problem for this guy, which is good in, in essence. Like You don't want it to be one trick against everything i wonder though if we flip form and can kill harima depends if we get a weak hit or not harima did die cooldowns are up which means the revive's gone and i guess now we just focus in on the reviver and then honestly like how could we lose at that point the a2 smacks the reviver into the dirt how the hell can we lose oh, it's so it's like so busted. Busted, just cool actually, just fun. <laughs> There's so many busted champions in this game now. We need fun champs, I guess. Like we're beyond questioning whether they should be the way they are. Now it's just how much fun do you have whilst you're smacking stuff up. Interesting, he's flipping form. I guess I, I'm not set his AI, AI, AI up right. Should he be flipping form back? Like, why has he done that? Just the way Mythicals roll, is it? That ends up being a bit of a longer fight, mainly because he just flipped back into support mode. He's like, ah, I think the team need help. But like, dude, there's three supports here already. Come on. That's it. Smash him up. Right, good stuff. Anyone else here? Oh, another lockout. This is fast lockout. No damage in this team. It's a weird setup. Okay, this is an interesting one. I guess thinking that Cardinal is going to revive this team and give them a chance which normally is the right thing but i think we just lock out the revive anyway <laughs> which is very sad for you my friend it's very sad the revive has been locked out it's only locked out for two turns though so it's not like a full warlord lockout i guess so we probably would want to take her down next easy pickings he's gonna have a go Obviously, Necrit's doing his protection job. He's a goner, and then we've just got an ultimate death knight to deal with. It's an extremely strong champion. Like, super strong. Um, yeah, it does make me... With some of my champions I've pulled recently, it does make me want to get back into live arena and start pushing up the ranks. The trouble is, I've got to work my way up because I let my, my rank just kind of, like, drop right off. And that part of it's super boring for me. So until I, I can't get to the fun part until I've done the boring part, I just can't really be bothered to do the boring bit. Ultimate Death Knight is a bit of a problem though in terms of just doing stuff quick, especially when he's, he's flipping back into support mode. I guess the poison's actually not that bad. It's killing him off. Get him dead. See if I can find, I just want to find a squishier team so I could just do some maximum damage. Someone like this. So a speed team. I mean, he might actually nuke me. Speed team of a ton of tools. Flip. How many buffs do we need? 74 buffs and a dream. Everyone's dead or locked out. That's the way we do it. <laughs> That's the way it goes. And that is going to be one dead team. 
Well, look, there you go. I mean, he's a super fun champ. I might try him in some Hydra teams and stuff as well, but I definitely want to get Gizmak into Hydra because I, I feel like his kit is going to be bonkers for that. Uh, let me know where else are you using Laz, Laz if you've got him. And um, what do you think of the Mystery April pack? <laughs> anyway, I've been Hell Hades. I'll see you soon.